Number 84. The principal component of mothballs is naphthalene, a compound with a molecular mass of about 130 AMUs, and it only contains carbon and hydrogen. A 3.00 milligram sample of naphthalene burns to give 10.3 milligrams of carbon dioxide, CO2. Determine its empirical formula and the molecular formula. Okie dokie. So as I read this, it seems like they're trying to describe a chemical reaction, right? They're telling us that this compound naphthalene, which is made up of only carbon and hydrogen, is burning to give off carbon dioxide. Now, when they tell you that something is burning, especially if they tell you it's carbon and hydrogen based, this is combustion. So we have to go back to writing out the standard formula for a combustion. The standard formula for combustion is always a carbon mixed with hydrogen. So it's called a hydrocarbon. And that compound is always in the presence of oxygen. And when those two come together, the burning happens and you will produce carbon dioxide and water. Now, we don't really know what the compound is. They only told us that it was just carbon and just hydrogen. So I'm just going to label my compound as CX, because I don't know how many carbons I have, and HY. I don't know how many hydrogens I have. So I can't really balance this equation because I don't know how many carbons I have or how many hydrogens I have. But I have some starting materials. They told us that this was basically a three milligram sample. So I'm going to put this. And they're telling us that it gives off 10 milligrams of CO2. Okay. So how are we going to figure this out? Well, there's a little law in chemistry that's called law of conservation of mass. That means that however much mass is in the carbon on the product side has to all be based off of all of the carbon on the product side. Oh, sorry, on the reactant side. And the same thing goes for any other element. So all of the hydrogen that was made in the water is coming from the hydrogen that was from the naphthalene, the naphthalene right? Naphthalene? Yeah. So basically what we can do is we can find out, because they told us how much CO2 was made, I can find out how much individual carbon was made. And I can say that's how many or that's how much carbon I have in my naphthalene compound. So basically with this type of question, the first thing you have to find out is if you want to do grams, which I always love to do grams, we need to find out the grams of the carbon and the grams of the hydrogen independently. Okay. So AKA one at a time. Now, the first thing is, is that these are both in milligrams. So I would just take it out of milligrams just because I like to work with grams. So milligrams to grams, remember, you're just going to divide by 1,000. So 3 divided by 1,000 and 10.3 divided by um, 1,000. So let's just write that down. So I get 0 0.003 grams for this. And maybe, you know what, maybe I'll just put that in scientific notation just to keep the sig figs. I mean, me personally, I don't really care about sig figs, but so I have one, two, three, so negative three grams. And then let's see this one. I'll just keep it as 0 0.0103 grams. Okay. So from the carbon dioxide, I'm going to specifically find out how much carbon I have by doing my uh, dimensional analysis by doing my stoichiometry that we've been doing over and over and over again. The flow for stoichiometry is always this. And maybe I'll just bring it down here, right? Okay. So we're just going to cater it to what we have. We're starting off with the CO2 and we specifically have 0 0.0103 grams of that. I can go to moles of CO2 and from there, I have to find out the moles of the actual carbon, and then I can find out how many grams of carbon I have. 
Okay, so that's my little flow here. Let's do the math. So 0 0.010103 grams of CO2. Use your ratio. Grams of CO2 goes on the bottom because I don't want that unit, right? Just look ahead to see where we're going. Moles of CO2 goes up on top. A gram to mole conversion of the same compound is always the periodic table. So when you're using the periodic table, you always have one mole. So one mole of CO2 is whatever CO2 is on the periodic table. Let's just figure that out. It's 44.01 grams. Cool. Let's keep going. You don't want moles of CO2 anymore. That goes on the bottom. You want moles of just C. A mole to mole conversion of different compounds or elements usually comes from the balanced equation, but we don't have a balanced equation because we don't know what this compound is. So I'm going to use another relationship and that's using the compound CO2 itself. So you say to yourself, okay, if I have one whole CO2, how many carbons are in the one whole CO2? Yeah, there's only one carbon, right? So by saying there's one whole CO2, one CO2, there's one carbon. And that's where the one goes on the carbon. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship. And then that cancels out. And now we just got to go to grams of carbon. So mole of C on the bottom, gram of C up top. This is going back to the periodic table, right? The PT. One mole of carbon equals 12.01 grams. And now I can just find out how many grams of carbon. So let's see it. 0 0.0103 divided by 44.01 times 12.01. I get 0 0.0028. And I'll say 0 0.281. And that's grams of C. So we found out how many grams of carbon I have. So in this whole compound, the grams of carbon is specifically 0 0.00281 grams. But now here's the thing, how are we going to find out the total grams of hydrogen? Well, if the compound is just C and H, and the whole thing is 3 times 10 to the negative third grams, right? and we know the carbon, we can use subtraction to just find out how many hydrogens, right? Because the total of this, if I add these two together, that should equal the 3.000 times 10 to the negative three grams, right? The whole sample. So I'm just gonna take the three times 10 to the negative three and subtract 0 0.00281. And I get a very, very small amount of hydrogen, but still, it's hydrogen, 1.9 times 10 to the negative fourth grams. Okay, now pause the video if you want because we have more work to do. All of this basically has to go bye-bye, okay? So it's gotta go, unfortunately, and there it goes. Bye, <laughs> it was fun. Now, there's a couple of things that we can also get rid of since we know the individual components of this naphthalene compound, I can kind of get rid of this balanced equation. So to give me even more room, I'm just going to get rid of all of this information. So, whoop. okay, let's just erase this. Goodbye, goodbye. Um, and this should still be, okay. Now. The only thing left is basically we just know the grams of carbon and we just know the grams of hydrogen. We have to go and get the empirical formula and the molecular formula using this amount of information. We've done this already in chapter three. So go back to chapter three if you want, you know, more practice with empirical and molecular formulas, but maybe you remember this flow diagram, right? This was how we went from a, basically if we went all the way from percent, but the end result was empirical formula and molecular formula. In this case, we're starting here. So I don't really need this first part. 
I already have the grams of my individual components. So let's write them out. I have 0 0.00281 grams of carbon and I have zero, nope, just kidding. I have 1.9 times 10 to the negative fourth grams of hydrogen. And now I can kind of erase this as well. Cool. All right, so first thing is I have to get the moles. How do I go from grams to moles? We just did that, right? That's the periodic table. Make that ratio, right? So I'm going to just multiply by a ratio. And I, for empirical formulas and molecular formulas, I like to do them at the same time. So grams of carbon go on the bottom, mole of carbon go on the top, and the same thing with the hydrogen, right? Grams of hydrogen on the bottom and mole of hydrogen on the top. What are going to be the numbers? Well, it's going to be the periodic table. And remember, if you're using the periodic table, it's always one mole. So one mole of carbon and one mole of hydrogen. On the periodic table, carbon is 12.01 and hydrogen is 1.008, but it's basically one. Grams cancels out, and now let's get the two mole values. So, let's see. I got 0 0.00281 divided by 12.01. So I get 2.3397 times 10 to the negative fourth mole of C, and then I get 1.9 times 10 to the negative fourth divided by 1.008. I get 1.88 times, eh, we'll say 1.885, or I guess 49, doesn't really matter, times 10 to the negative four mole of H. Okay, now the next step is to go from moles to a mole ratio. Well, in order to know what a mole ratio is, just think about what an empirical formula is. An empirical formula is always the most simplified compound in which you have the lowest number of subscripts possible. It's the lowest amount of ratio, right? So keep that low idea, small, low, right? What you're going to do is you're just going to look at the two numbers that you have, and you're going to divide both of them by the lower number to get the lowest ratio. So 2.3397 times 10 to the negative fourth and 1.88 times 1.8849 times 10 to the negative fourth seems like this one is smaller. So I'm going to divide each one by this. Okay, turns out that I have one mole of C, and let's see what's going on here. 2.3397 to the negative fourth divided by 1.8849 and 10 to the negative fourth. I get roughly 1.25 moles of H. Oop, hold on. Oopsie, this should be C and this should be H. <laughs> okay. Now I just want to make sure that I, yeah, looks like all the math is good. All right. Now, unfortunately, at this stage of the game, we need to have whole numbers. Now, I know that in the calculator, this would come out to 1.24 something, but I try to think of it in, in terms of fractions, and the, the, the closest fraction would be a 0.25, because I know that that equals to 1 fourth. But don't worry, you could use either number if you want. But the whole thing is, is that we need to have a whole number here. So we have to start multiplying by numbers in order for this number to turn into a whole number, meaning just 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. So I'm going to just, you know, guess and check. I'm going to do 1.25 times 2. And if I do that, I get 2.5. That's not a whole number. So I go to the next number, 1.25 times 3. That's 3.75. That's not it either. 1.25 times 4. Ah. So if I times this by 4, I get 5 moles of carbon. But I got to be fair. Whatever I do to this, I have to do to this. 
So this I would get uh, four moles of hydrogen. Now finally I use these values to get me my empirical formula. So I'm just going to put that over here. Empirical formula. We'll do carbon first, formula. So in this case, it's C5, because I have five carbons, and H4, because I have four hydrogens. So there's the one answer. My empirical formula is C5H4. Now we just have to find the molecular formula. Well, to go from an empirical formula to a molecular formula, I basically have to take the molecular mass that they gave me and divide by the empirical mass. So maybe I'll just say molecular mass divide by empirical mass. Now they gave me the molecular mass. They told me that it was 130 AMU. Doesn't matter if you use 130 AMU or grams per mole, but I'm going to take that number and I'm dividing it by what this would be on the periodic table. So this is just basically finding the molar mass of C5H4. So let's see, we got 12.01 times 5, add that to 4 hydrogens. So I get roughly 64.082. So I'm going to divide the two of them. And let's see, I get 130 divided by that. And I get basically a whole number, or you try to get a whole number here, of 2. Now what does this 2 represent? That means that the molecular formula would be two times greater than the empirical formula. So all of these little subscripts, specifically the five and the four, you have to multiply by two. That's all you gotta do. So it would be C, and I'll maybe put it down here, C five times two is 10, and then H, Four times two is eight. And that is your molecular formula. Whew. Crazy, crazy, comp uh, not crazy compound, crazy, 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 crazy question this one was. I'm kind of like tongue tied. I need a glass of water after this. But I really hope that this helped you, okay? Please uh, let me know in the comments, all right? And if you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button. That would mean the world to me. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in future lessons. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.